2, whatever comes after 2, 2 squared, the third prime number, 4. Okay, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, Twitch tells me I'm now live. Um, last time we were looking at occultations of, um, of lunar eclipses on Jupiter, which are effectively eclipses, solar eclipses, on one of Jupiter's moons. Uh, the situation that's demonstrated here. Uh, we have been using the um, the geometric finder occultation um, function in in C Spice, which I will uh, find occultation this one, and it's been pretty useful. But um, I think it is a little bit too limited for us, partly because it does require that the observer be a single point and not a not a body, or it, it be actually a specific um, NAIF ID center of a body. That is, um, that is too restrictive for us because we want to be able to have an observer on the surface of a body and we might even want to have an observer out in free space uh, such, as a, uh, such as a satellite, although that's probably not very common for us. Um, so we're going to take an alternative approach here and the alternative approach is going to be basically uh, looking from any given point at the angular separation between two uh, given objects, and we will go ahead and use actual objects for that instead of using um, instead of using um, points, and then the um, angular width of the two objects, and then we will use a formula that subtracts the angular widths from the angular separation to come up with something that'll tell us whether there's a partial eclipse, uh, total eclipse, or whatever kind of eclipse we have. And, and it's going to require a little bit of extra work here. That was just sort of an overview of what we're going to be doing. Um, so let, to do that, let's go ahead and go back into BC Obscurations F, uh, where we've gotten a pretty decent, um, you know, we've gotten some pretty decent stuff going here, which is, you know, we're basically talking about the, um, the, the uh, we can predict the right ascension and the declination of where the, uh, where the uh, eclipse begins and ends, or where the bodies are, how far apart they are, and, um, you know, perhaps we could even add to this the angular width. We don't have it yet, but we could easily add the, the angular width of the bodies. Um, so we're sort of going to be, um, we're not going to lose this code, obviously. It's good code. We want to keep it. I will double check to see that it has been pushed to GitHub, but I, I'm almost sure it has been. So let me just double check here real quick. Uh, and you can't see what I'm doing, so that's fine. And it has not. So, there you go. Um, okay, now it's been pushed to Git. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add, um, and we're going to be using functions very similar to this, you know, very similar to the ones we're using here. Um, and to add this function, we're going to go into bclib.h, uh, which again is not the right way to do things, as it says very clearly right here, and probably I've said it a hundred times here too. Um, oh wow, this is actually good stuff. Uh, umbral data, let's see. Um, okay, so this gives us the point of the umbral cone, the vector pointing from T to S, and the angle of the umbral cone, which is all good stuff. Um, and I'm not exactly sure, we can probably, we're going to probably be doing something very close to this. Um, so it's not it's going to be very different from this. Um, so we're just going to, you know, first of all, I don't know what to call this function yet. Um, okay, it's not going to be angular separation, but it's going to be uh, compute edge separation. That's the, the between the two edges of the two objects. Of two objects, and did I name them R and S here? Because I probably want, oh, I don't name them S and T. Um, from a third object from a th from a point, and I think I'll call it P to avoid confusion with the Q, which is more of a body name. So we'll say just P um, from a point P, and I think that is all we will need to do. Um, oh, and I see I see over here actually I took the radius as a as an input, which actually might not be a bad idea. Um, instead of having to, instead of using bod verd or whatever, because that might actually be be really kind of useful. In fact, this might be almost too simple. Um, 
uh, from a point P. And then we'll go ahead and I think we can just, I'm going to cheat and basically, oh, actually, okay, so we've got to be a little bit careful here. Um, given the following light generating objects, radius, as a three uh, assumptions, uh, a point P, a three-dimensional point, three-dimensional point P, um, I don't think we need this assumption anymore. And wow, I don't think I actually named this will be called, um, se I think we can call it separation data. That's actually not a bad name for it. And again, as with all spice functions, uh, we will, um, I'm pretty sure this how you spell separation, but I'm just paranoid. Yep. We won't actually be returning values. We will be assigning variables that they pass in. Um, as a three element position, a, th uh, a point, oh, let's say, a point P as a three element position vector. So I don't think we need to be that fancy with it and say it's a 3D vector. A returns, um, and let's see what I'm, I want to return here, the, There's there's sort of a there's sort of a point of vague interest here, which is uh, if the angular you know the one, the one question is are the two el the two things touching, which creates a partial eclipse, and are the two is one is the front body overlapping the uh, the back body, which is a which is a different um, which is a different question, and and we kind of want to make it so that zero means they're touching, and you know, anything below minus one means that th there's a full eclipse. So let me quickly see if I can draw that out. Probably not, by the way. Uh, but let me see if I can quickly draw that out um, using a uh, paint program if we have one. Do we? No, we do not. Um, let's see. And again, Mathix would be the way to go here. Um, but I'm hoping I can do this without without Mathix. Um, and I guess I want to say, oh, this is this is this is going to be ugly. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, I'm going to bring up Dia here just to see what we can do with it. I don't think this is going to work, by the way. But hey, what do I care? Um, let's see. Okay. And, okay, this is a little bit tight here. So we have um, an ellipse. And I think there's a way to force it to be a F circle, but I don't remember what that is. There's like a key you can hold down. And we'll create another one. And these are the two things that we're viewing. Um... And this is going to be really ghetto in the sense that I'm not going to even save anything in, ter in terms of files. We're just basically going to use, we're going to put it up here and then we're going to write down our results. So, and let me make them different sizes because they will not necessarily be the, uh, the, um, the front body will be larger because we, um, the back body is going to be the sun. So the sun's actually larger, but, um, well I guess, I guess that, that could be an issue, but oh, let's not worry about that for right now. Okay. So the touching case, like this, is going to be when, and I, the sad thing is I'm pretty sure you can't draw a line from the center of this to the center of that, which is really depressing, because um, that's what the line we actually need. Um, and unfortunately, it's beautiful. It's exactly the line we need and the one we can't draw. I think. Hang on. We can't. Oh wow! I I'm pretty. Oh, there we go. Ah. Okay. Uh, there uh, there might be a freehand tool here. Although I'd be surprised actually if there were. Um. 
And there is a way to turn off the background, so you can you can do this. You can say don't draw background, so it's it's hollow, which which is good, which is what we want. Um, the problem is even with that, you can't actually um, you can't actually draw the two the two lines um, that I want to draw. Which oh no 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 no. Uh, let me see if there's. I, I'm almost sure you can't draw these lines, unfortunately. So this line, and then <laughs> this line, but reversed. So brilliantly. How do I do that? Okay. Awesome. And it would have been great if I'd actually. Uh, Chosen the line tool again. So this is pretty cool. I've done something that I wasn't able to do before. Okay. So I'm those are of course pretending to be the center. So in this case, if the angular separation between the two is equal to the sum of the angular radii, that's the condition where we want to say zero. And let's write that down. Um if angular if some of the angular some of angular radii equals separation angle, that means the two things are just touching each other. Um, and of course, of course, we're assuming they're spheres, so we're assuming they they form circles in the sky, you know, spherical circles in the sky, not spherical ellipses. Um, and we want it to be minus one. And we will figure out what the formula is here for this. Uh, if the two one is overlapping the other, and that's going to be when um, Let's see if I can get back to the uh, yeah, and that will be when the um, and the angular separation can be anywhere in here, of course. The angular separation, the angular separation plus the uh, the angular radius of the smaller object is less than the angular width of the larger object. So let me put that in there. And actually that's going to be the equality condition. Um, uh, sep equal equal sep equal equal um, oh, I guess we don't even have names for these suckers yet. Um, angular radius one plus angular radius two, I guess. I don't want to know if I want to say that. Um, S angular radius plus T. That's really ugly. If um, if separation angle equals, yeah, we kind of. This is one of the few cases where I'm actually using video to teach as opposed to using video to help answer, which is which is actually bad. I might actually have to screenshot my own answer to, if, I, if I've ever published this, I'll screenshot my own answer here to, to get the answer. Um, if the um, if the angular radius of the the obscuring object T is exactly equal to separation plus uh, SR. Um, Separation angle plus uh, r angular radius of S equals angular radius of T. And I'm pretty sure that's correct, but I want to double check that real quick. Um, and that would be in our sort of silly notation, SEP plus... Um, so we will we will kind of figure that out, and I guess that would be actually tar minus r now that I think about it. Um, so actually, yeah. So actually, that's actually a good way of putting it. Separation is exactly the sum. We have zero, meaning it's about to touch. Minus one if um, the separation is tar minus. SAR. The separation angle is, and let me see if we can get that as a more more sort of a 
direct way of getting that instead of sort of fudging it with it. And one thing is I'm probably, if I was, if I was gonna keep Dia up, I was gonna, I should really do something like this to it. Um, separation angle is equal to the larger minus the smaller. Yeah, so that, that is, that does make sense. So sorry, this is not going to stay up here, um, unfortunately. But this is the scale we want to be defining here. Um, so we want sep pl tar, tar plus r to be zero, tar minus r to be minus one. So the, the function we need to use here is um, uh, thus, always a good word there. Uh, we, we need to figure out how to co convert the uh, sep tar and sar um, into the sort of numbers between zero and minus one that we want. And it will be bigger than zero if uh, they're not touching and it'll be smaller than minus one during the eclipse. And that is, that's the fact we're gonna use that, that's important to us. Uh, so what we need to do here is, um, and I wanna say it's sep minus tar over sar, but that might be too easy. So, um, so, minus, so this will be, oh, that's not, sorry, one minus, tar minus, it's going to be 1 minus this, I think. 1 minus sep over, okay. So when sep is equal to tar plus sar, tar, this is sar 0. And when it's equal to tar minus sar, this is tar minus sar minus sar 1 minus minus 1, which is 2. So I've done something. I need to go the other direction here. I think it's going to be this minus one, but I need to make another adjustment here. So let's see what this does. If sep is tar plus sar, tar plus sar minus tar, sar, sar, one, zero. And if sep is equal to tar minus sar, this is tar minus sar, minus sar, this is minus sar over sar, uh, which is minus one, this is minus two. Um, so I'm right now I'm going from zero to minus two. Um, and I think if I just divide this by two, um, that will give us the, uh, let's, let's double check, but I think that's correct. So if sep is tar plus sar, uh, sar over sar is one minus one zero zero. And if it's equal to tar minus sar, tar minus sar minus tar is minus sar over minus, sar is minus one, minus one, two, minus one. And uh, as sep increases, uh, this number increases, which is good because we wanted to get higher the further away they are. And as sep decreases, uh, this is um, this will give us um, lower numbers, which we also would like. And because we're only going to return one value, um, oh, I'm going to regret this. I think we can just return a spice double here. Okay, so our inputs are going to be very similar to the ones here, to the point we want to almost copy them. Um, spice double S3, spice double. SR, spice double T3, spice, what am I doing here? I, this is wrong, I need, these are parentheses. Um, spice double, oh right, because this is referring to spice double, and it has a, a bigger name, which is why we need more, um, more space here for it. Spice double TR, and then what else do we need? A point. Um, P, spice double P3. The point of observation. Okay. And this will, I think, give us a pretty accurate idea of the umbral cone. And technically the pen penumbral cone as well. Okay. Are those our givens? S, T, T, R. Okay. Um, because we're just dealing with vectors here, this might not actually be as difficult as I thought. Um, so the sum of the angular, so it's going to be the separation ang angle, uh, which is, oh, I'm so tempted now to say, I mean, in theory, we could send these as vectors from a given point. So we could pretend that P is zero. Um, 
And in that case, this would be even simpler. We don't even need to do a vector subtraction here. Um, because we'll just be given the angles from from the observation point. Um, and oh, that's really tempting. Um, P is a um, And this sort of uh, thing we're doing here with the 0 minus 1 is also kind of a hack. Uh, we could, in theory, just return the, um, you know, the, um, the separation angle and the um, sum of the angu angular radii, um, or difference or whatever. Um, let's go ahead and keep this the way it is. Um, P is it like, oh man. Um, let's keep this the way it is. We might at some point simplify it, and I'll make a note here. To do could uh, always make P the origin. And at some point in the future, we might come back to that, but we'll go ahead and do it this way for right now. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is the angular separation. And to get that, we will need um, temporary variable here. Spice double... Um, oh, this is actually really ugly because we have to do two vector subtractions. Um, or do we actually? Let's see, we have to subtract S minus P and T minus P. Um, and take the angle between those two. So I've decided that's going to be too ugly. So let's go ahead and actually fix this. I'll do a quick save of this just because just to have it in case we decide to go back to doing it this way. So I'm get pushing it on another machine. Okay. And um, and now we can go ahead and say uh, let's see. Given the following. Um, Let generate the object of the three radius fair okay, zero of the something. Um separation angle as viewed from the origin. And over here we can take this I think we can actually just do that. Um now we can also put this here. And I'm kind of cheating because I'm saying things like s sep minus over tar, where I haven't even defined these variables, but but that's okay. Um, so the separation angle here is going to just be um, it's a vector angle, and I keep forgetting they have a name for it, which is confusing, but not really that confusing. Um, and of course, we no longer need spice double that. Um, yeah, this is actually, I think, this is going to work better. Okay, so I do know I have it over here somewhere. I can never remember the name of it, but it is a fairly simple function. Uh, it's like uh, sep v sep c, I think. Might actually literally be v sep c. Awesome. Um, spice double separation angle is v sep c of s n t. Um... Yes, and those are both three-dimensional, so we're fine. And the separation angle, and... Um, oh, I'm tempted to almost do this without using any temporary variables here. Oh, may I, may I, may I. Let's see. Is this arctan or atan in, in C? There's always a little bit different. I'm going to say, I think it's arc sine. Um, so is going to be the arc sine of the norm, which I'm almost sure is V norm, Really? Come on. I never use V norm here. Of course I don't. Let's see if I use it here. I'm sure I must use it somewhere. 
surface normal. That's the separation. There it is, V norm. So it's going to be the arc sine of the uh, V norm of S. V norm C of S, because uh, these are all C functions. Now let me if I got this right now. Um, the angular radius is going to be the um, opposite, which is the radius over the hypotenuse, which is the uh, the distance. So the radius is going to be this. And guess what? I'm just going to I'm going to snowball this sucker. Um, yeah, because we we don't even have to use these things twice. So it's going to be this minus arc sine tr over v norm ct. Um, that whole thing over arc sine sr over v norm c s. Um, Minus one and the whole thing over two. And boy, if this works, I'm going to be insanely surprised. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see if this even compiles. And if I have messed up bclib.h, a lot of stuff will not compile, so we will see it almost immediately. Um, and I guess I need to touch because one of the oddnesses here is that this doesn't, there we go, that I have to change one of the actual files to get this to recompile anything. Um, implicit, oh, 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 oh. Is it arc, is it a sign? Always get that wrong. And if it's not defined, I'm going to be pissed, although you can define it from the, um, you can define it from the arc tangent. It's not difficult. It's still annoying, though. Awesome, no errors. Now, of course, we're not using this function, so that doesn't really matter. Um, so now, what we can do is we can um, we can start to test this a little bit by using it in the BC ops. We will eventually break this program out into a separate program because I really like what we have in BC ops durations. I don't want to necessarily get rid of that, but we can certainly add this. Um, so let's see. Try to add fairly early on here. Is there a V sub going on somewhere? There is not. Okay. Um, so let's see here. We have um, um, do we ever do a position on the um, obscuring obscure duh? And we do not actually do a position on the. Um, on the um, observer object, I don't think, which we will need. Well, let's see. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Um, in fact, we might not need it. Um, because obscure. Because these are the two. These are the two vectors that do treat the center of the observing object as being the origin, which is all we're interested in for right now. So we could, in theory, send those in. The only thing we don't have right now is the X uh, CR, which I'm almost sure we can we can get. So let's do this, and I can never remember separation data, which is actually now a little bit uh, arrogant because it only returns one thing. So obscured position pause, obscure ring pause. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, we need something here obscured pause and then something here okay and so we we have these of course um, and da -da 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 -da. I'm about to see obscured oh good yeah okay obscured rad um, nope sorry uh, always every single time obscuring rad um, so if this works, we should see a number that's pretty sim similar to ang1. Uh, so I'm going to put like, you know, versus percent f, ang1, 
and just to be obnoxious, we're going to say DPRC times these. We want to want to get these in degrees. Although that is a totally a, totally a hack. We don't really need that. Okay, so if this works, we will see um, it'll be smaller than N1 because we're we're counting the, the the sizes of the two bodies as well. Uh, but if this works, then we we we're in pretty good shape in terms of of what we're looking at. And then if that works, we're going to actually not use the uh, you know we're going to create a separate one of these um, that doesn't bother to use the um, excuse me. Um, that doesn't bother to use the um, GFOCL, you know, the uh, geometric finder occult. We'll just do it ourselves by looking at the number that this returns uh, until it becomes, um, I guess, zero or you know, zero or minus one. And we'll we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, and that's that's what we want to be doing here. So let's see. So I think this is ready to test. obscuring, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's see what happens. Probably won't work. Um, too many <laughs> arguments to function separation data. Yeah, because I, I wrote that function, and... Um, so it's good to know that I wrote a function and then immediately sent it the wrong number of arguments. Um, so one, two, three, four, that seems pretty reasonable. Over here it is one, two, three, oops, no, end function, then print this as a separate thing. Yeah, okay, try that again. Oh, BC obscurations actually, um, it worked. And I think we already have a, a call for it, oh. Well, am I in the same directory in all of these? I guess we can just do this. Um, minus 43. Now, does that make sense to me? I think it actually does, because Jupiter is huge at this point. Um, so minus 43 versus 0.9. Um, yeah, and this is... Um, yeah, this, this, is, this seems huge, but it's only because... Uh, Jupiter is really, really uh, big, uh, but I'm still worried about this. So let's take a quick look here. Minus 43. That's actually tremendously bad. Um, yeah, because when they're just starting to, um, when the um, when the obscuration starts. That should be, um, yeah, these are this, so this is like saying, um, nine degrees apart, oh, right, 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 nine degrees apart. Why? That probably should worry me that these numbers should not, should be exactly the equal. Um, so they're saying that the centers are nine degrees apart and the test value is like minus 43 degrees apart. And there's an easy way to test that, which we will do. Now I kind of wish I had done. Um, okay, 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 okay. Separation, which is going to be uh, this. It's going to be VSEP CST RPD DPR C times this. Um. Yes. And then at some point I'm going to have to figure out that, um, hmm. Yeah, at some point I'm going to want to print out the other numbers as well, uh, unless I've got them backwards for some reason. Um, so s, s is the object that generates the uh, the sun. So this should be, um, oh, the, in this case the order that I send them in is important, so let me be careful here. Um, so the first thing that needs to be sent in here is the thing that is obscured, duh, okay, which I do, obscured position, 
obscuring position, obscuring radius. That does look correct. All right, let's buggy. Let's see what this does. And because I, I have to make a minor change to it just to get it to compile again. And that worked. And I kind of wish I'd put a new line there. And even though it works fine without the new line, I'm going to do it because I'm just freaking anal retentive. Okay. Um. Oh. I'm not going to fix that. Um. Okay. Alright. Okay, well, this looks okay. So the separation is um, exactly the same as you would want it to be. Uh, and it's equal to, oh, I see, because these numbers will come after. That's why this, th these numbers are, okay, this is awesome. Okay, good. Um, now the minus 43 is the thing that kind of worries me. That's not what it should, it should be. Um, cause that would mean that there's like a, at the very touch when they start to, to obscure each other, um, they are, you know, this is the basically, the obscuration is 43 times as great. And that could be true in the middle of the uh, of the eclipse because Jupiter is huge, uh, but it's certainly not going to be true at the beginning of the eclipse. So let's go ahead and um, and let's go ahead and and see what's going on there. Um, and again, I'm going to be a little bit lazy here, not bother to label these because I happen to know what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm looking for the arc sign here. And I think I have one too many parentheses, but that's okay. Uh, v norm of t. Okay, and we're gonna again multiply this by dprc, and then the exact same thing except with uh, with s. Okay, and um, that that does seem correct, right? The arc sine is the radius over the distance. Um, yeah, I mean that should be a pretty small number. And now I've got to touch this because otherwise it won't remake. Okay. Um. Yeah, this actually looks correct. Yeah, the yeah because. Um. The angular radius of Jupiter. I mean, these, these numbers look like kind of what they should look like. Uh, the angular radius of Jupiter is a little bit bigger um, than the separation value, so it fully obscures the sun, which is good, but why are we getting a minus 43 out of that? So this is where we are, something funky is going on here. Uh, and I, in fact, it's even worse, because now that I think about it, that, no, no, sorry, that number should be between 0 and 1. Okay, so, 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 what we should be getting is separation minus this, which is going to be like, well, let's work that out. Um, separation minus the t-angular radius, t is the obscuring object, which in this case is Jupiter. And I think I've got a, now that I think about it, I think I've almost definitely got a division, a division sign. Uh, okay, so this should be very close to, this should be very close to me wishing that I'd fixed the calc function earlier. Okay, that doesn't look too bad at all. And so that... Um, over this should be about minus 0.5, exactly what I expected it to be. Very good, exactly what I wanted. And then minus 1 is going to be... Okay, so this is... Okay, and it still should be minus like point, this over 2 is going to be minus 0 0.75. So that's what we should be getting here, not this hideous value. So let's see what we've done here. Um, separation minus A sine uh, is over A sine. Yeah, I'm almost sure that I'm off by some parentheses here. And I'm almost sure that I want to... Um, not be so glib about what I was doing. 
So I think this division is, yeah, A sign. Um, I'm sort of torn now between... So we have the this, this, this separation minus the, uh, the angular radius of T. And I'm almost sure I, I did something there. Okay, so that's that. Now that over the separation at um, S minus 1 over 2, but of course we need one of these. Um, so there's something different. Oh, you know what? I think... Actually, I'm not sure this one will compile, but let's see what happens. That one might actually be f impossible to compile. Yep. I, I messed something up there. Okay, one more time. So, paren paren sep minus tar over sar minus 1 over tau. Okay, let's... I'm seriously this close to... Okay, I give up. I'm going to use variables. I'm unhappy about this. Um, but it it's actually probably super efficient anyway cuz C is actually pretty smart about these things one of the one of the few uh it's my stubble one of the few benefits of C is that it is uh it is pretty good about this sort of thing okay arc sine of this And that's going to be the arc sine of SR over this. And now I can just say dpr times sep, dpr c times tar, dpr c times sar. And now I can just return what I wanted to return in the first place. All right, let's see if that boogies us down a little bit. Okay, compiled that error. Ta 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 ta. Okay. Um, no, that didn't help. Um, so we have set test. So this is actually interesting because at this point, um, What we're tr the only thing I'm thinking is that we have like a like an integer messing with a um, with a floating point number error. Um, just to be obnoxious, I'm actually going to print the return value here, just as is. And if that's the problem, we can we can fix that pretty easily. Ta -da, ta -da. All right, compiles. Dun 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 now. Okay. Oh, it's gorgeous. That's exactly what we want. Minus point seven five three one nine five. Okay, that is um that is good stuff. So I uh, actually that's probably not the right answer, uh, because it really um Wow. I actually have no idea if that's a good good answer or not. I mean the, the moment of touching when the um Oh, because this is a central. Never mind. Because we're looking at the center. Uh, we're looking at the center of uh, of Metis and not the surface. We do have this little discrepancy here, so that's fine. Okay, so now we have something really weird going on here. Um, okay. And we are returning the spice double. All right, let's go crazy with this. Might as well. Okay. And then here we will just say um, 
I don't even need to really, well, I mean, I, I guess I could multiply this if I wanted to, but, um, oh, I know what's wrong. Uh, separation data does not need to be multiplied by DPR, uh, C, because uh, that would be totally wrong. So now, I'm wondering if we could have done this in the first place. The, the whole mistake there was that I was trying to convert something that wasn't in radians uh, to degrees. So let's see if this works. I'll be very happy if it does, because it should. And viola, 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 viola. Gorgeous. Okay, um, so that says we have a partial eclipse starting at these, this point in time. Um, I guess we could print out the vert, you know, the one for the middle and the end of the eclipse. Um, at the middle of the eclipse, will be fairly heavily um, eclipsed. Now I'm kind of tempted to do this for, as viewed from the moon, when does the sun get blocked by Earth? And this should be, okay. Um, and hopefully I've got a time listed here. Here it is. Um, so the obstruction would start on January 31st, so we need basically lunar eclipses for... I've got too many freaking windows open. Uh, close their tabs. Oh, nice. It didn't even bother to warn me, which is actually what I wanted. Um, well, okay. In January and July, let's see what the January one looks like. Okay, <laughs> it'll be total, so January 31st, good stuff. Um, unfortunately, we're using the center, so I don't know if the timing is going to be at all useful, but 1122 is what we're saying. Um, Moon enters penumbra, partial eclipse. So it's yeah, right in here that we're seeing this. Now, what'll be interesting is to see um, in the middle of the eclipse. Um, actually, that's probably not that interesting. Because um, this says here that basically we have a um, from the center of the moon, we have a two up uh, two percent uh, of an eclipse. So that doesn't mean anything though. Um, the only thing that'll that'll be important is in the uh, middle of the eclipse, which we're going to estimate as the, the big plus end over two, uh, we should have um, we should have a uh, number bigger than one indicating that there is a total eclipse going on. Uh, so let's see here. Where is N2? There. This will be test during and test after. And if we find a partial eclipse, that'll be really sort of nice uh, to um, to validate what we're doing, um, and we might we might do that. Let's see. Test during minus one eighty one point one. Test during minus two. Um, and we're so those are the two. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. Uh, there were any partial eclipses this year. And again, this is viewed from the center, so it's not necessarily um, accurate. So test D, test D, both total. Well, it's a little bit crazy. Let's see if we can do it. Um, the Earth, seeing the moon block. The see, this might not give us any results at all. Yeah. And the reason is because at the center of the Earth, uh, we will never have a, uh, the the umbral uh, the umbral cone won't reach, um, and in fact, I don't think that'll ever happen that the umbral cone will reach. But let's oh wow, um, so apparently yes, uh, in the during from the center of the Earth, um, a quarter of the um, of the sun will be blocked, which means it'll be a lot better. Um, on the surface of the Earth. So let's see what that is. Observe test B, test obscuring. 
Um, test A. Come on, where's the little... Is this one one? Oh yeah, it is actually. Okay. So, whoa! That's like four days from today. Let's take a look. And that'd be kind of silly if I actually ended up... So other eclipses for 2019. Um, wow. I nailed it. And according to this, the um, the eclipse will begin at 436, but that's not really true because, again, this is from the center of the Earth uh, where, where there are no observers. But let's take a look here. Uh, at least we're getting reasonable sounding results now. Um, okay, 519. Okay. And we say at the middle of the eclipse, uh, which I don't actually bother to compute, but we can do that here. Seriously, this thing's going to kill me. So roughly speaking, see the middle of the eclipse is at 0519. They say it's at um, um, what, 0519. It's not bad, huh? Um, and we don't know, I mean, we wouldn't have the concept of an annular eclipse because we wouldn't, we wouldn't be knowing that, um, we wouldn't be knowing that from, uh, from this data here. Um, because we're looking from the center of the Earth where it'll always be, um, you know, it'll never be better than annular. Okay, so we have this nice function now. And so now what we could do is we could look for... Um, and so now the question will become... Uh, so now we can... And the important thing about this is we can actually do this from any position, not just the... Um, uh, not just the uh, just the uh, center of the of the Earth uh, of the planet we're looking at. We can do it from any position at all. So the next thing to d to sort of figure out is um, I don't know if I still have this diagram up. I do. Nice. Okay. Um, is if okay. It's, wow. Oh, that's that's radius. So if you're here, we uh, no sorry. If you're here at the center of the planet, we know this angular separation. We know these angular diameters. Not a problem. Um, but the question is, what if we're here or here at sort of the edges, or even here, right at the front of the planet? Um, and it's going to turn out, in fact, it's sort of easy to see that if you're on the edges here, and there is an eclipse on both of these edges, uh, then there's going to be a total. Then the whole, the the, the umbral cone. If it touches this point and if it touches this point, it the whole planet is eclipsed. And if it doesn't touch one of these two points, the planet can't be eclipsed uh, because that means one of these two points is not fully eclipsed. So if we now want to look for um, total solar uh, total eclipses, it won't work for partials, but for total, we now have a method of doing that that doesn't involve the occultation function. If we're willing to assume, uh, well, yeah, if we're willing to assume spherical um, spherical points. If we're assume, willing to assume that our, our shapes are spherical. And I'm, I think we could even do it without spherical, but it would be uh, harder because we'd have to figure out the reference frame for Q. We're not willing to do that yet. Okay, so pretty happy with this. Um, now, the, so the function we kind of want to know here is um, it's not really difficult, but it, it's, it turns out it's not just one point. What we want to know is if we know, you know, where this, where we are, the Q is, and where S is, we want to know the vectors that point to the edges. Or there's actually just one vector that points here and it's negative points in this direction. That seems simple enough, but this diagram is in two dimensions, but the problem we're solving is actually in three dimensions. So it turns out there's more than one vector uh, that, can, that, that has that magical property that we're looking for, that it is perpendicular to this vector. Um, and there are C spice functions to find. Um, it turns out it turns out there's, like, again, more than one way to do this. Uh, what we're going to look for is we're going to take the, and it is going to be the, um, in this case, it is going to be the the sun that we're concerned with because that is the thing that needs to be eclipsed on on both sides. Um, and, uh, it, you know, if we could have used the occultation function on random, uh, on arbitrary three-dimensional points, we could have just used that. But 
the occultation function is limited to the center of bodies. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to find the um, this is a pl this is going to be a line. It looks like a line here, but it's a plane in three dimensions. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the plane that's perpendicular to a given vector, um, and then we're going to find. Let's see what we would find here. We're going to find the um, yeah we're going to find a vector in that plane. That sounds kind of silly, but um, that's what we're going to do. Um, and let's see if let, let me just see if Spice has something like that. I don't think it does, unfortunately. I think we need to I mean it does, but we need to we need to um uh, but we need to um sort of construct it per pen. Hmm. What does that mean? Perpendicular component of a three vector. Find the component to a second vector. Oh, that pro this might be sort of a shortcut, but um, so we can just choose an arbitrary vector um, and hope that it's not the vector <laughs> that's that's parallel to the vector we're looking at, and then just take its component. That would be really easy. I'm just I'm like 99% convinced that uh, that there's no easy way to do that without accidentally being the vector that happens to be parallel, in other words, pointing, in which case it has no perpendicular component. So that's an interesting function, though. Um, that's the only thing that says perpendicular. But what we're actually going to use, though, is um, one of the plane functions here. And the plane functions is an um, intersection of an ellipsoid and a um, longitude of the sun, normal vector, and constant to plane. Um, Yeah, uh, so we're going to use a point, and the, norm the normal vector is going to be the vector pointing towards the sun. Um, make a C-spice plane from a normal vector and a constant. So the normal vector, this sucker here, Q to S, is the normal vector, and the point is going to be the center point of Q, uh, which I guess for us will just be the origin. Um, so I'm wondering if we need a function for this. Okay, so you have the vector... Um, yeah, because we don't know what this plane is, that's the problem. So we just have a, a vector, we want to find something that's normal to it, we want to find the normal plane to it, and then we want to find a vector in that plane of, of a, well, just the unit vector in that plane, I think will be all we need. And I'm wondering if that's what I really want. Um, I guess we might as well be nice and return a vector of the correct length. Um... And if we're given the center point, we could, in fact, return... Um, we could, in fact, return a vector... Given length, let's see, that is also... Uh, that gives you this plus this and this, you know, one vector that gives you this plus this and this plus this. Um, which would just be the minus of that vector. Uh, so let's see if we want to build this up here. One of the problems here is I don't... I don't like, because these functions are sort of ugly, I don't like having to nest them, even though that's sort of how you normally program, is you want to nest, you know, build simple functions and then nest them on top of each other, um, but that's not what I want to do here, necessarily. Um, but this seems pretty simple, so we're given a, um, a vector. Um, hmm. Yeah, I want to avoid the V sub there. So what we're going to say is give us a vector that is perpendicular to the given vector. Uh, yeah, shoot. Well, you know what, let's just, let's not spend too much time on uh, worrying how to do this. Um, return a vector perpendicular, uh, return a unit vector God, I'm going to regret this. Unit vector perpendicular to the given vector. And maybe I'll build another function on top of this. Perpendicular to the given vector. Um, yeah, that seems sort of okay. And because we're going to be printing a unit vector, we can't, we have to um, 
Uh, we have to, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go whole hog there. Given a point Q and a vector from Q to S, given, a, given an object Q, and let's use our same thing that we did here, um, given the following. And in this case, do we care about the... Um, do we care about the object's radius? Or we just need its position? Uh, we just need its... Uh, yeah, I think we just need its position because we are only going to be concerned with... Yes, we only need its position because in this case we really don't care where the edges are We because we're not... We're not going to sort of, you know... Um, there's refraction and stuff, so... I guess if the object's close enough you could, in theory... Um, not see it from all the way around the world. You would only be able to see it from certain points. I think we can ignore that little sophistry there. We probably can't. It's going to turn out that I'm going to make a big mistake, but let's do that. Let's pretend. Uh, given an object, given the following. So it's da 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 da. Given the following, uh, a viewer Q. Why do we call him Q? And we'll just do that. A viewer, a viewing object. Q as a three alt position vector radius QR radius Q as QR um, yeah we can call it a viewing object a light generating object uh, S as the position of the third returns um, I want to be careful here. I could return both vectors that we needed, but I think I don't want to do that. I think I want to return um, the vector perpendicular A vector. There's more than one. There's a whole family of them. Perpendicular to QS, which is the joining point of the two, um, of length QR. So this is the vector you can add to Q or subtract from Q to get two opposite points on the side of your globe for which you can in theory test um, whether there's an eclipse or not. And um, then we can use goal finders and, and geometric finders to do stuff with this. Um, and so it's going to return a vector. Okay, so we do need to do this as a void. Um, perp vector, um, spice double three, spice double S. Okay, hang on. We might as well do this in the order that we have, we have defined them in. Spice double three. Uh, and of course we need then the return value, um, a vector P, oh, am I going to regret using P here? No, I don't think I am. Um, and how do we, how do we do this again? Where we, I think, do we do it as a, yeah, we need a point or two. Spice double. Oh, no, I guess we don't. We just, we just put it as an array, and then we fill it in. We just assume that the caller is going to do the correct work here. Okay, um, so we have a, um, let's see, and uh, and we need to declare here, I wonder if it's, yeah, I guess it's okay to do this, uh, subtraction, uh, let's see, diff, three, and that's going to be a v sub, let's see, uh, we're going to subtract the, actually doesn't matter, um, Let's see, what does V sub C do? I'm almost sure it does what I want it to do, which is subtract two vectors in three dimensions. Uh, we subtract S and Q, doesn't matter which direction we do this in. Uh, that, now I'm almost sure it's, and then the third one is the where you put the, where you put the result. Yeah, V out. 
for us diff. Okay. Um, so we have that vector. Uh, we now want the spice plane perp and I think that that should be fine I think we should just be able to say spice plane here we don't need to put a, 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 a dimension on that okay and so now we have a um, uh, sub. make a spice plane from a normal vector and a constant uh, let's see. Normal constant. This is the normal vector. Normal vector, which we just got. Oh, and what is this function? The normal vector is the diff. That's the vector that's perpendicular. Um, and the spice constant. Wait, what? Why is that a... D okay. Oh, is the constant going to be a normal vector and a constant defining a plane? So the normal vector we have... Mm, okay, so this is not the one we want. We want the one that takes a, uh, a vector and a point and generates a plane. And then if from that plane, we'll look at the spanning vectors. And the one of those will be the ones we... Well, either one will be the one we need. Um, Let's see. Da 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 da. Derived now. We don't want that. Intersection. 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 Longitude. Normal vector and constant. Normal vector and point to plane. Um, yes, that is what we need. Okay. So the normal vector is diff. The point is Q. Uh, going through Q. Perpendicular to diff. And we will give it the uh, the perp the plane. And I think I better pass this as address of perp, if I remember correctly, because it is a pointer that it takes. I am always get that wrong, even though I've done it like a bajillion times now, and it is. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So now we have the uh, the plane. What can we do with it? Well, we want to go from plane to spanning vector. Haha. <laughs> Let's watch you do that. Okay, and that is actually not that hard to do. Plane to point and spanning vectors. And I'm wondering if there's a better way of doing that. Plane, nope, nope, that's the other way. B. Um, I'm almost sure the spanning vectors are going to be, um, let's see, point, okay, and it's going to give us um, one input, which is the, uh, oh, 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 we need a point also. Um, point in the input plane and hang on right the detailed output is going to be giving us uh, and we don't actually care about the point we just want the spanning vectors um, two orthogonal spanning vectors to generate the geometric plane uh, represented by plane and I think the reason we don't care about point here is because it's going to be the point we passed because we use Q as the point to pass in we're going to get Q back out. I mean, w we can we can look at that, but I think that's what's going to happen. So the plane we want is the perp plane that we just created, the perpendicular plane. Uh, the point oh, that's going to be an, an output, so we need to actually we need to have a place to hold it. Um, we'll call it point the point in the plane. Vec one and vec two. Uh, point vec one vec two. Okay, and then at this point, um, it, it doesn't matter which one we return, actually. We could run a combination of them if we wanted to. Um, let's see. So is this going to be a normal vector? Is this going to be a unit vector, rather? Um, geometric plane. What is it? This... Um, Okay, yes, yeah, point one, well, yes, because it's, it's the point. Um, how is a multiple of the plane's normal vector? Uh, geometric plane is the set of vectors 
Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm almost sure that spam, these are going to be unit vectors. But... Let's see. Oh, and I guess we'll put in the norm here too. So this is just going to be, it doesn't really matter which one we use here. They're both going to be perpendicular. And then the V norm C of that one, which if it isn't one, we can fix it, but I would be surprised. Um, and if it is, if it is one, we'll multiply it. So we're not, we're not done with this function here. This is just a, let's just see if we can get it to work here. Um, da -da 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 -da. So from here, we would like to call, oh, we don't even need to print F because we're, because it does it by itself. Perp vector to, um, I think we have observer here, right? Um, Oh, we do not have observer position here. Um, oh, we must, actually. Oh, wow, we don't. So, actually, this could just be... Um, hmm. Yeah, I think in this case we will actually need to know where the observer is because... Um, Actually, maybe we don't. Uh, so if we know this position, we can just subtract. Yeah, we can just um, use the differential vector. Okay. So to heck with that. And why do we need the radius of QR? Why do we care? Oh, because that's the, the, the length of, um, um, let's not call it, radius of an obs a viewing object Q, which we don't even care, viewing object at the origin, a viewing object Q at the origin, okay, radius QR of a viewing object Q at the origin, a light generating object in the sun as a free element, a vector perpendicular to, um, S of length QR. So this is a lot easier now. We don't need the V sub. Um, we're going to um, see NPL to see. Um, oh wow! Do I need to actually declare this as a vector? I mean, it's the origin, but I mean, do I still need to? Um, make it an array? I guess I do. And this time we can just say um, origin 3 equals 0, 0, 0. So that kind of ruined the, um, the advantage of not having to do the subtraction. So I want... Um, no, 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 no. Um, NV2PL, okay, let's say. Um, the normal vector is now going to just be S itself. And let's get rid of these inputs that we don't need. Okay, so normal to S going through the origin and put the result, stick the result into perp. Uh, and then take the perp. Um, Uh, oh, this is going to be actually something it gives back, which I probably don't care about. Uh, give me the perpendicular vector, give me the perpendicular plane, give me back two spanning vectors, and we'll just look at one of them. So there we go. So from here, test before, we can just call... Uh, okay, perp vector. And I know we have observer rad. Um, which we're not using right now, but we, we have it. And then we want the 
obscured pause, because the sun is, the, this is actually important, the obscured pause, and then we need to throw in something, something to get our, to get our value back. Um, and do we have a, uh, th we have tons of these things we're not using now. Um, spice double, observer ad, temporad. Am I using temporad? I bet you I am. Oh, cool. But I'm, I'm using it in such a way that I can, um, I can reuse it here. So it'll, it'll, I'll get it, but I'm not going to use it because I'm printing out the result. Okay, so let's see what this does. And let's make this a little bit clearer that this is, we're in the, in the perp vector function. And will this work? Of course it won't. I'll be very surprised if it does. Um, perp vector cannot convert to pointer type. Um... I'm pretty sure I need to say, wait, do we need to say address of point? I mean, this should be fine. These are all vectors, right? No, this is not a vector. Okay, one more time. In function warning, unused variable diff. Oh, temporad, I misspelled it, so that's... Which, by the way, is why I suck. Let me just make sure that that is it. And because it's in a way we don't need to pass it by reference. I mean, it's unused variable diff. Well, you know, it would make you very happy by removing the unused variable diff because we don't really need it. And now I'm wondering if we just do this, this. I'm going to be fairly unhappy with myself if I just broke it by doing that. Okay, whoops, so now... And... Um... Okay, so it does it the correct length. And... Yeah, no idea if that's perpendicular to the sun. Because at this point we're not printing out the sun vector; we're just printing out its uh, spherical coordinates. Um, so cool. We don't know. Kind of looks perpendicular, don't you think? Nah, maybe not. Um, so let's see. Yeah, no way of telling from here whether that's... It is a unit vector, which I sort of expected. Um, what's the first thing that's being returned there? Probably nothing useful. Let's see if we can do it with, uh, with one that has more results, like um, this guy. Da-da-da-da. Okay, perfect. Um... Okay, why is the third parameter zero? That kind of worries me. Mm. That is a little bit strange. Because the vector s, that would mean the vector s is a pure z vector, which, which probably isn't true in general. Um, all right, well, um, let's just figure out what the hell's going on there. Because I'm pretty sure that s is not always going to be. If it is, we we've done something very strange. Um, because s is supposed to be the um, obscured position, which is um, as observed from the observer ID. And there's no reason to believe the sun is always going to be exactly the up Z direction. Unless I've done something... S no, 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 there should, there should no, that should not be true. So, anyway. 
see what this does. Turn on them. Okay, uh, getting too many printouts here. Okay. Oh, you know, I wonder if the, um, I bet you the other perp, this is the perp vector in the XY plane, and the other is going to be the uh, perp vector uh, in, that has a Z component. So this is just their way of choosing the two, um, the two spanning vectors. One is going to be in the XY plane, and the other, I'm guessing, is going to be in the XZ plane. But why guess when we can uh, clutter up our lovely printing some more? Um, and we're just going to say other perp to make it sound like we, we know what we're talking about. Okay, um, careful. And the other perp we're also going to say percent %f. So I think that's going to be the one that has, um, that has a component of z that is not, um, that is not zero. So it's not a huge deal for us. Um, I guess the only concern would be if, it, if the perpendicular in one direction were purely zero, we would have to use the other vector. Although that should never happen because it has a unit length of one. So uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, as usual. Okay. Not even going to bother to check this time. Okay, other perp, and there it is. Yeah, the other perp does have, um, oh wow, kind of nice. The first per perpendicular vector has no z component. The second one is just kind of wild. It's, it's just what it needs to be to, uh, to, to be a spanner of the, the, the first one. Um, so I guess it's going to be, uh, da -da -da -da. so these vectors will be perpendicular to each other in addition to being perpendicular to S. Um, and I guess because we have S listed here, we could check to see that they are perpendicular. Um, and I'm not going to do that because I just, I believe um, that this is correct. Okay, solid. So we now we have two perpendicular vectors. The only thing this doesn't do is uh, multiply them by the, the QR, uh, which we can do very easily because we actually have to set these values ourselves now. Um, so P0 equals QR times uh, VEC. Well, go ahead and use VEC1. It seems nice. I'm not going to assume the third component is zero. Um, so I will, I will compute it even though if it, if it is zero, this won't do anything, obviously. All right, and then we don't need to return it because it is uh, it, this function returns void. Um, so then, let's see how bad we can make this. And that will be, um, and what the hell, we'll just go crazy with this. Temporad 0, Temporad 1, Temporad 2, and what we hope is QR, which is, of course, V dorm C of temporad. Okay. Let's rock and roll. I'm just going to assume it's going to work. I probably, it probably won't, but... Um, yep. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And so that is the vector that points perpendicular to the sun and is... Um, it happens to be in the xy plane. That doesn't really matter, though. And so, if we were to add or subtract that vector from the observer's position, uh, and we could see what the the eclipse looked like from there, um, so we're very, very close now to saying um, whether a planet is an eclipse uh, from two other objects. Um, and the, and the way to test that would be to call the um, the function. Uh, the function that we wrote earlier, the separation data function, on three points. Well, I think you can get away with just doing it on two points, actually. Um, yeah, because the, the points that are closer aren't going to really matter. So, so, yeah, on the two points that we get back from adding and subtracting the result of the function we just wrote, the perp vector function, and if both are eclipsed, uh, or and returning them the um, maximum of those two values, because we need to know um, if they're both eclipsed, then they're below minus one. But the maximum of those two values will will tell us whether it's fully eclipsed or partially eclipsed, or, or you know, neither or both. Or it's possible neither is, in which case it could still have a partial eclipse somewhere. Um, and I think 
we can do a little bit more to find th this is only for going to be work for um, for total eclipses, not for partial eclipses. Um, and we've been going for an hour and 25 minutes, which I think is more than enough time for you to get sick of me. Uh, let's see if there's anyone in the chat. I don't think there is, and there is not. Um, thank you for watching the stream, and uh, we will continue with this uh, next time, maybe.